Okay, in questions 10 and 11, we're doing factorizing. Um, and we've got two different kinds of factorizing, okay? This one is just going to need one set of brackets because what I'm going to do in this one, I'm going to spot a common factor, something that all of these things can be divided by, and I'm going to put the common factor outside the bracket and then fill in the bracket. Whereas on this one, I've got x squared, x, and numbers. This is a set piece where it goes into two brackets where, where each bracket has got an x in, okay? So let's go come back to this one, do this one first. What can each of these been div be divided by? Well, there's nothing in terms of numbers. In fact, there are, there's, there's just a 1 here and just a 1 here. But in terms of p's, I've got p cubed, I've got p, I've got p. The highest power of p that appears in everything is just p, p to the power of 1. And the same thing with q. I've got q squared, q squared again, and q's. So the highest power of q is q, which means the common factor for all of these terms, they can all be divided by pq, but not by anything um, with more in than that. So the easiest term to fill in is actually the last one, because obviously to get minus pq, I need to do this pq times minus 1. So I'm going to finish with a minus 1. OK, at the beginning of the bracket, I need to get p cubed times q squared. So I'm going to need p but not just p, because p times p would only be p squared. I need p cubed, so this needs to be a p squared. I think that will work. p times p squared will make the p cubed work. Then I've got to make the q's work. I've got a q here. I want q squared, so I need another q here. q times q is q squared. So pq times p squared q does equal p cubed q squared. So I've dealt with that term, and I've already done the minus pq at the end. So for the middle term, I'm going to need plus. Um, I need a 3. Well, I haven't got any numbers at all yet, or I've got a 1, if you prefer. So I'm going to need a plus 3. Um, I want a p, but I've already got a p outside, so I don't need to, any more p's, because that would give me p squared or more, and I don't want that. But I do need to make a q squared. Now, I've got a q outside the bracket, so to make my q squared, I need to have a q going with that 3. So let's check. p times q times 3 times q does equal 3 times p times q squared, because that's the q times the q. So I've made that term work. So that is my factorized form of this expression. So that's that one done. Now, quadratic factorizing is probably something that you practiced a lot. The main thing is after you have got what you think is the answer, to double check it works. So what I'm looking for, this number times this number, I've got to multiply to give minus 14. So the only way I can get a minus is having a plus and a minus. And there aren't that many different ways to make 14. It's either 1 times 14 or 2 times 7. Um, 1 times 14 is never going to give me a 5. So it's got to be the 2 times 7 version. So which is going to be the plus and which is going to be the minus? Well, to end up with plus 5, I need um, a plus 7 here because that's going to give me 7 times x is plus 7 times x. And if I put the minus 2 there, minus 2x, okay, 7x take away 2x does equal 5x. So I've kind of checked it, but I strongly recommend that you do the whole thing. So you use your smiley face or your foil or a grid if you like grids and do x times x. That's x squared. That's good. Um, outside, x times minus 2 is minus 2x plus 7x does equal 5x. So that term is, that's the one to really check. And then 7 times minus 2 does equal minus 14. Yes, it multiplies out correctly, so I factorized it. Because I've drawn lines on that, I'm going to write it out again without the lines, but I have got my answer already. That's the correct answer for that one. So that's questions 10 and 11 dealt with on the factorization.